I hope you never have to come out to this. It's a big swollen ear. So they call the ear hematoma. It can happen most commonly from chronic ear infections. You can read food allergies at the top, and that's why in my book, Dog Dish Diet and Feed Your Pet to Avoid the Vet, I talk about ways to treat ear infections by limiting the amount of allergens in the food, especially biscuits and treats. But hematomas can also be caused by shaking, where the ear hits against something, bites and infections, where the ear gets infected. Um, but most commonly, the ear is just filled up with bloody fluid, and we have to treat it by draining the fluid either by draining it out with a needle, which I'm going to show at this time. It's a non-surgical way to do it that's become more pop. Traditional way I've always repaired ear hematomas is to surgically slice open the tissue, the, the skin of the ear, and suture it to the cartilage, tack it down so that it heals from the inside. It's just much more of an invasive and painful procedure. So the last few times I've tried this method, which is to inject cortisone after draining the ear. And that's what I'm going to show you now. It's a non-surgical option many veterinarians are using. And then what happens is they break a blood vessel in the ear. And so you have skin with a cartilage. It's like a skin, it's a cartilage sandwich. You have the skin on the outside and cartilage on the inside. What happens is you break a blood vessel and this, this uh, um, the blood vessel bleeds under the skin and causes this big bump. So this old guy, he's um, tranquilized and I'm gonna put this needle in and drain the fluid. So you stick the needle in and then you don't because don't try this at home and you could but you would have to tranquilize your dog. Hold it still. Hold it still and then it bite you. And you go to the hospital, and then you it jerk, and you slip the ear with the needle. And it's a big bloody mess. And then the, the ear would bleed. See how it's going down? It's like an air bed. Have you ever had an air bed, and you just drain the air out, and it starts to get all flat? And um, you, the little pleats show up more. But anyway, this one does. It's obviously not a pleated ear. So now I'm going to take the the fluid out, look at it, it's just, it's just bloody fluid. Watch, I'll put some in my gloved hand. See, people think, of, you know what, and you think there's a lot of blood at home when you go out, look, I'm going to squirt two cc's out there. It looks like a lot of blood. That's not a lot of blood, so if you're, people think their dogs are really bleeding when they have like a little bit of blood like that, and that's two cc's, they have a lot more than that. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna now sh uh, change the syringe and, I, and to the one with the cortisone in it, and I'm gonna sh put some cortisone in there. Easy, easy, and, uh, good girl, good girl. And then we're gonna seal good off girl, that. Good girl, good girl. So what we've had is we've drained the fluid, we've put a little bit of cortisone in there, and then we're gonna wrap the ear close to the head so it keeps this area deflated and and not to fill up with this bloody fluid again. So we're going to wrap it up. So when we tape an ear, we put uh, tape right on the ear and we, we don't make a big deal out of hematoma taping because we don't want a bunch of bandaging tape in there because it will come off so easy. So we just put it with some of these uh, uh, elasticon bandages. And we put it around the air like that, and we try to leave a little bit of the opening so the air can um, breathe. breathe a little bit. So we're going to leave right in there, we're going to leave a hole where the hole comes out, we'll leave that in there. And we'll uh, just put a wrap around there. And then uh, we instruct the owner, which is in ca this case Robin, and she's a technician, so she can um, wrap her dog's ear by herself. And we're going to see if this... Uh, sure injection will work. Sometimes uh, they need the surgery, but um, sometimes yeah. just the, the taping and the side. injection will work. And we've done it several times that way. But for 30 years I've done the surgery that you saw in the other YouTube videos. But as you can see, this is much, much, much better on them. It's easier on them. 
So we'll see you in a couple weeks. We've got to leave the wrap on for a couple weeks because it'll take that long for all the fluid to come out. So she has a ear hematoma, which is sometimes caused by food allergies and allergies to pollen and molds in the environment. And also, what makes me think maybe she's got a little bit more food issues is she's also got a lot of irritation around her anus and and her anus is actually very very thick and and, and pigmented and swollen um, so this is probably um, in a year or two um, or maybe even sooner she may develop what we call peri -fish, perianal fistulas which is infections around there so what we found is uh, Robin's going to monitor what she eats and, and um, which she does already, uh, but she'll have to do even a little more with the ear problem and the thick and anus. But isn't that a nice way to end a video with an anus? I mean, it's the end. <laughs> well, I hope you understood what I was getting at, that I usually would do surgery and open up the ear and suture it open so it can heal from the inside out with wrapping it. But the last few times I've tried to just drain the fluid out, inject cortisone in, but what I've done differently is I've wrapped the ear up so that it stays flat and deflated and has less chance of reacting. A common cause of these ear hematomas and ear infections are food allergies, so really be careful not to feed your dog grocery store biscuits and treats which contain a lot of wheat gluten. Wheat gluten is so common, so commonly causes ear infections and bladder problems and seizures. And dry food also causes bladder stones. Um, check out Dog Dish Diet. I talk about different ways to feed your dogs, uh, including better dry food, better canned food, raw food, home cooked food, and my book Feed Your Pet to Avoid the Vet shows you how to slow cook home cooked food for a fraction of the cost of really high quality canned food. Remember, solution, pollution, let's see, the solution to pollution is dilution. I do, I get it right. And if you use more moisture in food, it just helps the body do it, its job. Just think, apples and meats and veggies, they all have moisture in them. We don't eat just pieces of dry cookies all the time and I'm glad have a great day